Hi there, this is Michael Harris. In today's blog post, I want to talk to you a little bit about my water skiing accident that I had a kid. First, I want to tell you I'm out here in the woods. I'm by this. It's not really a lake. It's a marsh. And it's just like one of my favorite places to go. It's just I come out here and wander around. I'm a little bit off trail. Not too far, but a little bit off trail. It just depends how far in the woods I go. But let's talk a little bit about my water skiing accident. In 1971, <clears throat> I was a typical kid. I was just riding my bike, I was chasing girls, I was having fun. I was playing a lot of golf as well. I was actually junior champ at 1971 at Portland Golf Club. I was a little hotshot golfer as well as a few other things as well. And then suddenly, very quickly, everything changed. I was out water skiing, hotshot water skier as well, and I was attempting a beach landing. I was going estimated 30, 40 miles an hour, or somewhere in there, probably a little bit faster because I got whipped into the beach. But anyway, I won't get too deep into that right now. So I hit the beach and I had massive internal injuries. I ended up in the hospital. They took out 60% of my liver. I was not expected to live. I slipped into a coma. In that coma, I had a near-death experience. I left my body. I met the spirits in a garden area in God, and I was told that everything was going to be over okay. As I felt myself coming back to my body, I reached out to the spirits and said, I don't want to go. And they said, it's time to go back. You're not done yet. So I went back. What other choice did I have? I remember like, just like moving quickly back into my body again. And then shortly thereafter, I woke up. Again, I was in a coma for 10 days. Then I discovered that it had 6% of my liver removed. I was the youngest person at that time to have that much of their liver removed and survive. So I had 21 blood transfusion. I had a collapsed lung, broken ribs, lost my gallbladder, all sorts of things. I was toast. Well, being a typical kid, what did I do first? I asked for my bike. I just wanted my bike back. My bike had been in the shop and I was worried that it was going to be sold because that's what the little sign on the wall says that if your bike is there for more than 30 days, they'll sell it for uh, the cost of the repairs that they made. So I wanted to get my bike back. So they went and got my bike, which was really great. And then the doctor said after about a month in the hospital, he wanted me to go home. He could have kept me there for months on end, but felt it'd be better to be in my home, in my own bed, around my parents all the time, my brother and my other friends. And my doctor, I had a pretty cool doctor, he came to the house every single day. I had a tube in my stomach and he cleaned out the, let's see, let me get this fixed. He cleaned out my tube every single day of everything that that was draining. So I did that for a while. I had a tutor for about four months, and then it was time to go back to school. I was that kid in class. You probably have had or know somebody like this too. I was a 12-year-old, sick, whitely-looking kid in class that wasn't expected to live. So here I am. What am I going to do? So again, I get back to school. I start getting around other people. I'm still struggling. I haven't talked much about my near-death experience or any of that happened. I didn't really know what to do with it. But I ended up writing my book, Falling Down, Getting Up. And of course, it went to number one in three different categories on Amazon. Unbelievable. I can't believe that happened. It was just this little book. About a few people would read it. And then that book is really the story, more of my story about my water skiing accident, as well as other falls and hitting bottom that I had that I really learned to use as fertilizer for life to help start to create a really amazing freaking life. I mean, after all, life is precious, right? So then starting falling up radio. I wanted to tell my story more, but more important, I want to bring other people's stories on as well to tell their stories, their flaws, their challenges, and how they got through it. Why? Because I want as many people to realize that they can overcome virtually anything in life. 
you just got to take these falls and challenges that we have and again use it as fertilizer use it as manure to start to grow new to start to create what you really want in your life so i invite you to listen to all the episodes here share this with some friends i'm going to post some some other falls and bottoms that i've hit as i've gone along can hear the plane coming by. I don't know what he's doing. He's out sightseeing out here today or something. So anyway, have a totally amazing day and I'll talk to you soon.